there is new smaller spawn chunks in Minecraft, which means you will have to change how you chunk load in order to continue to load areas without the player. Hello there, Ray here, and I will use my almost 15 years of technical Minecraft knowledge to explain everything you need to know about the new smaller spawn chunks and how you can load your base by using them or even load your base without them. I'll be covering how chunks load around the player and four different types of chunks and what each of these chunks can and cannot do and explain the difference between render distance and simulation distance as well as compare them to random ticked areas and mob spawning areas. I'll then show you the three different ways which you can chunk load, how to actually set up a chunk loading machine, then finally how you can make a chunk loading line to any location. Even if you think you know all this, I assure you you will learn something new. So before we talk about how the spawn chunks work, let's first talk about how chunks work in general in Minecraft. If you press F3 plus G, this will pull up this here, which shows you where each of the chunks are. Each of these columns here is one chunk. They're 16 by 16 blocks. That goes from the bottom of the world all the way to the very top of it. And the Minecraft game will choose to load chunks around the player as the player moves around. That way the game doesn't have to struggle to load everything possible in your world, but only what you can see within the distance of your player. So when you walk into a new area, it's going to load new chunks in front of you and then unload the chunks behind you. So the amount of chunks that you can see is actually determined by your settings here in your video settings. This will control how many chunks out you can see. And this is determined by your render distance setting here. By default, render is set to 12 chunks and your simulation distance is also set to 12. So the way it works with a render distance of 10, you can see about 10 chunks out, not counting the chunk that you're standing in, with the 10th chunk being obscured in the fog. But the render distance only really changes what you can see and doesn't really determine what can actually occur in these chunks. And since you want to use the chunks to the best of their abilities, you want to know which chunks are actually useful. And this is not done by the render distance, but it's controlled by the simulation distance. And the simulation distance is the thing that determines the different types of chunks. There is four different types, and I have a little illustration here. If I stand right here where it's white, with a simulation distance of 10, that means we're going to get 10 entity processing chunks. These are chunks where entities can move about, which includes things that can die in the game, such as like armadillos, items, armor stands, or different types of boats and minecarts. If you do F3 plus B, you can see these hitboxes. This is an easy way to tell what is an entity, including yourself. And these chunks are unique in being the only ones where vibrations can be heard. Also, the things that occur in the next two chunk types can also occur in the entity processing ones. So with our simulation distance of 10, we have a total of 10 of these green chunks. But these entity processing chunks are not just in a straight line, but instead all the way around the player, which has an area of 21 by 21 chunks with the player in the center. And these entity processing chunks are the most useful, which means these chunks can handle different types of entities like TNT, as well as items getting moved by water, other mobs like villagers, and things like minecarts, which are all considered to be entities. There's dozens of different types of farms which can run in these chunks all by themselves without having to have the player even be there. I have a video covering what types of farms and machines can run in these chunks without the player and I'll have it linked down below when it's out. So the majority of the area would be entity processing being these green chunks here but then right before the chunks get unloaded there is some special ones that are right on the edge. The first ring of chunks that is closest to the edge is the block processing. So in the illustrated block processing chunks, which are these red and pink ones, blocks can change states. The pistons can extend, things can turn on and off, and doors can like open and close. And even water can flow in these area. But the block processing chunks cannot process entities. Also, vibrations won't be able to be heard in this chunk as well. So entities that are in this chunk will be mostly just frozen until they are loaded as entity processing. But since entities freeze when they come over here, what happens when they get pushed from an entity processing chunk over into a block processing? Well, if armor stand ends up getting pushed by some water, armor stand will just barely get across the edge before it's unloaded. So as soon as I load this area, you'll be able to see the armor stand just pop up midway. And then once it's loaded, it'll get moved the rest of the distance. But water's pretty slow at moving it. Let's go ahead and move it faster using a slime block will shove this armor stand across the border and see how far it makes it over here. And because the armor stand was pushed faster, it actually makes it further into the chunk. So if I load it, you'll see the armor stand is actually mostly across this next block and not right on the edge as the other one was. And TNT that starts blowing up onto the entity processing chunk side can actually break blocks on the block processing side and even damage entity 
trees that are over here while they're still mostly frozen. By activating these tests from afar, we can see what exactly is going on over here. You can already see the redstone blocks were destroyed by the TNT and the TNT is missing. None of the entities are currently showing up because I've been spectator mode with the chunk generation turned off as a game rule. So as soon as this chunk is being processed, also the villagers are going to show up and you can see they get shoved by the explosion of the TNT and then we can actually check their health and see it dropped quite a bit from the initial 20. Items can also barely make it over the chunk border, so if we drop an item from that drop over there, it's going to go down the water and it will unload as it makes it over the chunk border here, but we can actually pick it up with this hopper here. So when we drop the item out, after a short delay, we can see in the chat it says item in, meaning that we captured the item and had the item stored over here into this hopper. And I showed these cool tricks about putting entities in partly unloaded chunks and some really cool things you can do with it over 8 years ago. So it's amazing to see that they are still useful to this day. So the third type of chunk that is beyond the ring of block processing is these gray ones which are mob cap processing. So in the cap processing chunks they are even more restricted than the block processing ones. Any type of block changes can't be done in this chunk here. And one of the only things that can be done is actually detecting entities and how they correspond to the mob cap. By pressing F3 you can get this menu here and way down here there is this M with a number after and this is actually a number of hostile mobs that are being rendered around the player. So notice that it says 2 because it's counting this shulker here and it's counting this second shulker off in the distance. We'll see that the shulkers way at the end aren't going to be an entity or block processing but can still be detected by looking in the F3 menu. So if we check again we can see there is the M and we can see there is a number beside it and now it's set to just 1. This is because one of the two shulkers is close enough to us to be within that band of chunks which are mob cap processing. The next shulker was even further out yet which is the black ring and this illustrates the unloaded chunks. This means that the game doesn't have any information about what's going on out here and has them completely unloaded and that way the game can save those without any problems. So the chunks that get closer to the edge of the loaded area around the player are less and less useful. So now that you understand the difference between these four different types of chunks, I'm going to turn on this chunk data pack which lets me actually see what's going on from a far distance away. So we got 1B in entity processing, 1 in block processing, 1 in mob cap processing, and 2 of them in unloaded chunks. So if we head back to the AFK spot, We'll see what the bees say when we're standing over here. So despite having five bees out there, only four of them are actually saying stuff in the chat. And they automatically tell us what type of chunk they're in. The first one was in the green entity, the second one was in the red block processing, and the third was in the gray mob cap processing. But the unloaded one can't say anything because it's completely unloaded from the game. But if we walk forward into this chunk, now this is the center and we end up loading another chunk out there. And you can see the next bee all of a sudden starts spamming some stuff in the chat. So now we have four of them loaded. If we go out one more time, we can end up loading the fifth bee. So now we have five things in chat. So let's change our simulation distance and see how it affects what's actually going on at the very edges of the loaded chunks. Now you can change your simulation distance in single player, but in multiplayer if you would change this, it doesn't actually affect it because the settings are already set by the server and you'd have to change it in your server settings to make a difference. So our sim distance is currently set to 10 and we have three Bs in chat and if we go ahead and turn it down to be lower, all of a sudden the B that was an entity processing chunk is now only a block processing chunk. And if we would turn this down even further yet, we'll see that all the Bs will just become mob cap processing. This is because anything that's not being loaded by the simulation distance is being rendered by the render distance. So if we would increase the render distance, we're going to switch from having only three bees loaded to now having four. So if the simulation distance is smaller than your render distance, the chunks between these two areas are automatically set as mob cap processing. And only by setting these to be the exact same number for both render distance and simulation distance, where we can have it so there's only a single band of mob cap processing. Doesn't matter how I move within this area, there will only be one chunk analyzing B that will actually be in the mob cap processing chunk. Anything beyond that will be unloaded, anything close will be block processing. So you could think of the render distance, actual area in which you can see around your player. So by making it bigger, you can actually see further away. But this doesn't actually mean that things are going to be happening way out there. This is all controlled by the simulation distance. So you can bring this down really low. And that's going to make your computer run better because the game will only make things occur 
really close to the player, even though you can see really far away. So having high render distance and simulation distance is the most strain on your computer. Lower simulation distance will make it better, but having both of them down low will be the best. Now one thing entity processing chunks can't do is do random ticks. Random ticks are used in order to do a lot of things like grow crops. So I went ahead and reset all these crops and if we go ahead and turn up the random tick speed which is normally set to 3, we'll increase it and we'll watch these crops grow. And we'll see that despite these crops being able to grow in a lot of the chunks, they actually can't grow in all of them. So let's stop their growth and see exactly how far out they went. So we got one chunk and they're labeled all the way up to the edge here you can see between chunk number eight and nine all of a sudden the crops stop growing so despite these being entity processing the random tick area is only around the player and it is an area that is a eight chunk radius cylinder around the player and unlike entity processing chunks the random tick area only occurs around the player so if there's no player nearby, there's going to be no crops growing. It includes mushrooms spreading, vines spreading, fire burning and spreading, ice and snow melting, leaves decaying, farmland hydrating and updating, all the different types of crops naturally growing, grass mycelium spreading, mud converting to clay, lit redstone ore turning off, nether portal blocks spawning in zombified piglins, turtle eggs cracking, campfire smoke particles appearing, amethysts growing, copper blocks converting, and cauldrons getting filled. Creating and explaining these designs takes time, so take the time to drop a subscribe as well as leave a like on the video. Now mob spawning is not determined by the type of chunk or if it's in the random ticked area. So if we set it to night and mobs start spawning in, even though I have my render and sim distance set to the lowest, we still get mobs spawning around us. Now mobs can only spawn greater than 24 blocks away from the player. If I turn off the spawning, and if I go ahead and increase the render distance, we'll see how far out the mobs actually spawned. You can see that the mobs could only spawn in within the render distance and could not spawn in unloaded chunks. But if we increase the render distance, while still having the simulation distance at its smallest, we can see that mobs can spawn out really far further out than our actual sim distance. This is because mobs can spawn up to 128 blocks away from the player in a big sphere, and that's only limited by the actual loaded chunks, which is affected by the render distance. So if you want all the mobs to spawn in much closer to you, just make sure to lower your render distance to the lowest, but this won't work in multiplayer because they already have the setting set by the server. So now that you understand the four different types of chunks and what can and cannot occur in each of the chunks, let's talk about the three main ways chunks can be loaded in the game. So the first one you're already familiarized with, and that is the chunks that are being loaded around the player. The second way is your spawn chunks. Now before version 1.20.5 and Java Edition, spawn chunks were as big as this bigger area you see. But if you update your world to any version after this, they will be automatically shrank down from a radius of 9 entity processing chunks down to just 2. With a total of just 9 entity processing chunks, then the block processing, mob cap processing, and then everything beyond would just be unloaded chunks. The third main way you can chunk load is by using my nether portal chunk loading for the nether dimension. This is something I showed almost 8 years ago where you could chunk load the nether without even needing a player. And it was the first person to discover this, you could check out the original video down in the description. Since the first showcase of my nether portal chunk loaders way back then, they have been used by the majority of the Minecraft community which is always such a crazy feeling. But there's always a couple individuals that will try to take credit for my work so if you see this let me know and also let me know if you see people that do use my work and also give credit so i can leave them a nice comment by using my nether portal chunk loaders you can have a base chunk loaded that isn't being loaded by the player and it isn't being loaded by spawn chunks this is because anytime an entity comes through a nether portal it's going to load the chunk where the item comes out of which is this chunk over here if we press f3 plus g we can see the middle chunk plus it's going to load a ring of chunks around that one also it's entity processing then a ring of block processing, and then finally that ring of mob cap processing. Notice this looks exactly the same as the new spawn chunk loaded area, except this chunk loaded area can appear anywhere and not just limited to spawn chunk. We just need to have my nether portal chunk loaders. So the item that's coming out of this nether portal is the one that's loading the overworld. But the question is, how is the other side of this portal, which is the nether dimension, how is that being loaded so it can actually throw the item through? Well, this is because the nether 
nether is also being chunk loaded as well. So when the item from the overworld comes over here to the nether, it's going to chunk load the chunk that it came out of, which is this one here. And just like the overworld, the nether portal will load this 9x9 entity processing, then a ring of block processing, and then mob cap processing. Then everything beyond that would be unloaded chunks, unless the player is here loading them. So by having these two machines, we have one of them throw item onto this side, loading this side, and then it's turned around throwing an item back to this side, which is loading the other side. And they work together to load each other. And because both dimensions are being loaded on their own, they can continue to be loaded even if I leave the area. So notice that we have our chunk loader over in the overworld, and I can leave both the nether side and the overworld side. And as I move away from the player, the chunks would normally unload, but you'll see that the little analyzing bees are going to tell us that the chunks are still being loaded despite us not even being there. So once you have this machine set up, it will continue to chunk load. The only time it will unload completely is if the server restarts on a multiplayer server or in a single player world if you would save and quit your game. Because when you save the game, it will unload all the chunks so it can easily save them so nothing gets corrupted. So notice when I log back into the world, the chunk analyzers aren't saying that the chunks are loaded. That's because they got unloaded. So the way you'd have to start up your chunk loader again is to load up the area which has the initial chunk loader. So there's two versions of it. I have this version, which is a version that just will pick up the item and immediately send it back over to the overworld. It doesn't have any brains or redstone, but this side has all the brains. This one has a clock that will try to send a new item into the portal every 10 seconds. So the chunk loader machine will automatically restart the chunk loading as long as you just come over here and load the chunks yourself. This chunk loader is great for your base as you can have it here even though you're not around. I'll talk about what types of farms machines can run just by using a chunk loader and not having a player and I'll put that video linked in the description when it's completed. So to use my nether portal chunk loaders, I've already done a tutorial which I'll link down in the description to show you guys how you can set this up so that it will properly link between the nether and overworld and block by block on how to build each of these up so you feel confident. But what I will be showing you guys today is how you can automatically chunk load your base even after leaving the world or having the server get restarted. So the way we're going to do this is by using spawn chunks. So since spawn chunks load when you load up the world, these chunks will be loaded. That means we can use them to send items through a portal into the nether. And then once those items come over here, we'll load part of the nether dimension. And then when this side is loaded, we can put in another nether portal out here at the edge of it, which we then can use to load a little bit further and a little bit further. And we'll continue this until we load the spot where we want to load, such as like your base or your farm. So to get started in doing this, we first need to figure out where the spot we want to load, such as our base, is compared to our spawn portal. So this is another portal that takes us to our spawn chunks, and we have to go southeast in order to get to our base. So let's hop over into our spawn chunks, and then inside of our spawn chunks, we're going to go to the most southeast corner of spawn chunks. That way we're just a little bit closer to our base than the very center. Also, usually in the very center of your spawn chunks is a portal that's often used by a lot of people. And you don't want that portal to get linked up with the portals we're going to use for chunk loading to your base. So we're going to build our first chunk loader in the very corner of the entity processing chunks of spawn chunks. But we do need to make sure that the actual portal that is accepting the item is still inside of the entity processing chunks, these green ones. So you can see here the portal block is sitting here and we got some of the redstone sitting outside of it the item is still able to get shot over here and the item is getting teleported over to another dimension the redstone can be sitting in the block processing chunks that's just fine and then when the item gets sent over we need to make sure that the portal it is linked with on the other side uses the same coordinates of this portal with the x value and the z value divided by eight and the y value kept the same so if I go ahead and teleport through this portal here you can see the new coordinates are divided by eight compared to the overworld side and the y level is the same this way your portal from overworld will link up with this one over in the overworld and will accidentally link up with the ones that are being used for your nether hub or or your spawn chunks. If it does happen to link up, that just means that this other portal that people are using happens to not be linked up properly. So now that we're in the nether dimension, the distance between spawn and our base is eight times closer than in the overworld. So we're going to use the nether dimension as the easiest way to get our chunk loaders to eventually reach our base and chunk load that. 
So with this newest portal we placed down, it's gonna load this chunk plus a ring of entity processing around this one. So we have a couple options on how we can actually get chunk loaders over to our base. We can either go straight this direction and then once we get lined up with it, then we could turn and then go this way. This will get us directly to the center of where we have to load. Or if your base is a diagonal from the spawn chunks, you could put a diagonal of chunk loaders that gets you from spawn all the way to your base. Now I'm going to show you guys how to do the straight one because doing diagonal can be a bit confusing, but does use less chunk loaders overall. So we're back here at our another portal that takes us to spawn and we're going to decide to go straight this direction. So we know that this portal loads that chunk plus this one is entity processing. And we need to have our chunk loaders partly inside the entity processing chunks in order for entities to actually go through the portal. So over here, we're having it right on the edge of the chunk. This side is entity processing, meaning this item that comes out of the dropper can be processed and it goes flinging through the air and ends up going into this portal here and then gets teleported onto the other side. So what happens when it ends up on the other side? Well, it's gonna come out of this portal here and it'll be collected with the hoppers underneath, which will pipe it around up some droppers and then shoot it back through the exact same portal. So now this item goes down and after a short delay it gets shot back out again. So then we just recycle that same item but notice that it came out of the right side of the portal and it ends up going through the left side. So if we would face the same direction as item going through we can pretend we are the item and notice that the items can end up on this side of the portal which is different than the side it went in so it went in on this side but it ended up coming out of this side and what we happen to do is jump a chunk while doing this and every time an item comes out of another portal or end portal it's going to load the chunk it comes out in as entity processing as well as a circle of entity processing around that so just by having this chunk loader here we were able to move the entity processing chunks which which were limited to the edge of this, we're now able to add this chunk as well as this chunk, which start to become a line of entity processing chunks, which we're gonna take eventually all the way to the base. Now, a couple things to mention with this design here is to make sure you have your redstone on the same side that's already being loaded. So that's the side of spawn. We know that this is already being loaded. This is typically unloaded until the machine operates. If you have the redstone kind of between two of the chunks, it's possible for some of the redstone to just get glitched and partly unloaded and it'll just freeze either on or off permanently until you end up updating it. So pretty much all the important parts of the machine are already on the side that's being loaded. And the only stuff that's on this side is the portal that's gonna let the item come out as well as the hopper to pick it up. Now the overall side doesn't really matter where it is within the chunk because we're not actually trying to gain a distance on the side. So it can be between chunks, it doesn't really matter. But what does matter about this overworld portal is where it is in relation with this portal over here. Now in my tutorial in this video here where I show you guys how to actually set up this machine with a single chunk loader, you would want to take the coordinates of this column of portal blocks and then times it eight and then build your chunk loader in that location. But when it comes to the chunk loaders where we're trying to gain distance and make a chunk loader line, we won't use these coordinates but instead we'll use the coordinates of where the item will come out which is this side so we'll take these coordinates then we'll go over to the overworld we'll multiply the x and z values by 8 while keeping the y value the same and make sure that location is lined up with the dropper which is dropping out the item this way when the item goes through this portal it's much more likely to come out of this side rather than coming out of this side because when the item comes from the overworld into the nether it's going to check around looking for the nearest portal block as divided by eight of its coordinates and it'll happen that this side is a little bit closer than this side so the item will come out of this side and that's what we want we want the item to come out this side that way it ends up loading this chunk rather than coming out of this side and end up loading this chunk which won't get us as far now you could always choose to not do this chunk loading between two chunk borders but instead take advantage of the already one extra chunk that nether portals will load so let's say you just chunk load this chunk here and it already loads this chunk here so if we put another chunk loader right in the center it would happen to load one chunk over and we could do this for every single chunk and we would slowly increase the area which is being chunk loaded but by doing this method by having it over top of the border makes it a little bit more complicated but you can actually skip over one chunk instead of making one of these chunk loaders for every single chunk. 
So our chunk loader line is getting us pretty far. Now we get to the point where we need to turn. So this chunk loader loads this chunk over here, which then again loads an extra row around it, which includes this one. And at this point, I went ahead and turned it and it started going towards our base that way. And then once again, you can see I did the exact same type of machines going in this direction. Now I did actually run into a problem where sometimes even though the item would come out in the new chunk, it would think that's actually loading this chunk as the center one rather than thinking it's loading this one. And I looked at the actual item as it's coming through and it was definitely coming out on this side but for some reason it thought it was coming out on this side and wasn't loading another extra chunk in this direction. So if this problem comes up it can be pretty difficult to notice it in survival because it won't have these handy analyzing chunk bees which can tell you what exactly is going on in those chunks without you being there. Now if you have any ideas of why the item thought it was in a different chunk, let me know down below. Now the way I solved the problem is I moved it from here to over here and then it started working. But we'll take a look at how you can actually test to see if your line is working just in a little bit. So let's pretend you continue to build your chunk loaders over the border. So this chunk loader is loading this one as well as the extra ring around it. And at this point you can start doing some kind of diagonal where this one loaded this chunk and it also loads this one. So I decided to put the border over here, get us a bit closer to our goal. And then this one ends up loading this one plus this one, which does have the portal which will take us to our base. And at this point, we need to come in and put in one more chunk loader. Notice that the version I have here doesn't have any brains, where all the previous ones have the brainy redstone part of their device. And on the other side, we just have the device which is immediately sending the items over, which is the more simpler redstone. This is important because another side is going to be the side that's going to be loaded first. So it has to have the brains in order to start up the next one. Now having the brainy side of the chunk loader in the overworld works great if you just want to chunk load it only while you are online and you're not worried about the chunks unloading after you leave or after the server restarts. And you can find that simpler chunk loading tutorial in this video here. But since we're going to automatically have it chunk loaded from spawn all the way to here, we'll need to have the brains over on the nether side. So we need to make sure that this final chunk loader also has the brains. So let me go ahead and switch out this design for that one. Okay, so I switched it out with the version that has the clock. So when it does get loaded, it will automatically start dropping items over into the old world side. So now we just need to make sure the old world side is lined up properly. And we'll do this just by standing in here and getting these coordinates, which are 127, 127. And then we'll multiply them by 8 since everything is bigger in the overworld. So we need to put up our new portal at those coordinates there, 1016. So we're at our base and we're in the center chunk that we wanted to be loaded. And I went ahead and put the portal in at 1016, 1016 for X and Z, and 133 for the Y. But I made a mistake in which direction to actually put the portal in. So we would go ahead and walk into this portal, we're facing east, but when we come out of it, we're facing south. So we need to make sure that the one that is in the nether dimension will dictate the same direction as the one that we put in the overworld. If you look at the previous ones that we put in, like this one, if you walk east to get inside of this portal, when you come out the other side, you're also going to be facing east. And that way when the items get shot out, like this item is going to be shot off in the west direction, when it comes out, it's going to be still shooting out west and land in this hopper here. Otherwise the items will end up shooting the opposite direction and getting stuck over here by the dropper. And that's why we have the dropper up so high, as well as shooting in this direction so the items don't get stuck on the edges or in the corners. So I went ahead and fixed the overworld portal so now if we walk in facing south, we're facing the same component on the old world side. And if we watch it, we can also see the items are getting looped around and back into the nether side. So if we do everything correctly, we should be able to put down one of our analyzer bees here and we should leave this area and it should reload this chunks even after the world is reloaded. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll head over and head back to spawn and we'll leave this bee in. This bee will tell us if the nether side is being loaded. And if we did everything correctly, all these chunk loaders should be linked properly going all the way back to our spawn chunks. So now that we're at spawn, let's head out really far out, over 10,000 blocks away and then from here if we would log out this will unload everything including spawn chunks let's go ahead and log back in again now once we log in spawn chunks are also going to be loaded 
and then after about 10 seconds they're going to load the nether dimension after 10 seconds they're going to load two chunks away and that's just going to keep repeating until we get all the way to our base the further your base is away the longer it will take for it to load so now we can start seeing in the chat it just got around to the nether side of our base after about 10 seconds, it should now entity process load our nether side base. And then if we wait just a little bit more, you can see now it's actually loading the overworld side. Now in the past, if you would go into a different dimension, your spawn chunks could unload at least partially, but now that isn't the case anymore. So now we can even unload the world while being in the end dimension. And then when we reload it, spawn chunks are gonna get loaded again. Let's go ahead and speed up time, and then you'll see the chunks are gonna start loading up. And just like that, once again, we're loading our base without even even being in the old world to start with. And we can run the same test while being really far out in the nether dimension. And once again, you can see it automatically loads your base. So it doesn't matter where you are in your world, it can get loaded. Just need to make sure that the spawn chunks are initially loaded. And this normally happens automatically when you log in as single player, but on multiplayer, it can determine on what type of mods you're running as some mods will automatically unload spawn chunks. So they have to test that out. Now, speaking of testing, let me explain how you can test to make sure the chunk loaders are actually working at your base without having access to commands. So now we're back at the area which would be your base that we want to check to see if it's actually being chunk loaded without us being here. One of the easiest ways you can do this is just by dropping some items in the different chunks near your actual portal. So by having a few items in each of these, we should be able to see that some of these items despawn and some of them do not. The ones that should despawn after five minutes are the ones that are in these green chunks here. Yet the ones in the red chunks and beyond should be there even after five minutes. So after you threw down the items, then you want to travel very far away from your actual base so that you cannot see it and then a bit further. And then if you're a single player, you just want to go ahead and unload your world. And then when you reload it, all the chunks should be unloaded, including your base. And then you just want to AFK here for the five minutes for the items to despawn, plus a couple extra minutes just for your chunk loaders to kick in. So after the time is up, let's go ahead and go back and see if any items despawn. Press F3 plus B, we can actually see the items more easily. Come to the center, there's no items here, there's no items here. We can see that there's still items here, here, and here. That means, in fact, it did work. These chunks were loaded, and therefore they could let entities be processed, such as them getting despawned after five minutes. Now you can do a similar test on a multiplayer server, but you do gotta keep in mind there's like, you know, other people walk around your server and they might be chunk loading part of your chunk loaders, making them work even if you have some that aren't working. So it's not as concrete test by doing this in multiplayer, but it can help you diagnose any problems in your system. Now if you are confused about these three different ways to do chunk loading, make sure to check out my previous video about end chunk loading where I also do a tutorial on how to build up these loader machines as well as check out this world download where I have this all set up so you can see exactly how I did it and pay attention to little things like the direction of the portals and the coordinates. If you do have any questions or if any of this changes in the future make sure to check the description for the most newest version or if I include any more helpful tips. Now see how I designed an automatic farm for every single item in the game Minecraft with this playlist here, or become a supporter of mine like through Patreon if you enjoyed the almost 15 years of me innovating this game. Otherwise, you can always share this video with others, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye-bye!